in a way, your currency is your ability to predict these trends. As you get more successful, do you feel an increased pressure to be right in the same way a Warren Buffett needs to be mm. right every time? He's moving so much money. Yep. You're giving influence yep. to so many other influential, successful people. Being wrong in a big way could hurt maybe your relationship with them. How do you, one, do you feel that stress? And two, how do you cope with that stress? Really? I just want to recall the clip where I said this show was funny and entertaining, <laughs> grounded in intellect. That was an incredibly insightful question. <laughs> Couple things. One, I feel no stress about it. But let me tell you why. Mm. I know, I don't think, I know that I'm not in the predicting business. Meaning, um, I've never predicted anything. What I am is probably no, you know, this is why I think I've always loved comedians. I would argue that an overlap that you and I have is social observing. Mm -hmm. We have to mm -hmm. for our material. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. What I do for a living is I'm a human anthropologist watching people move and then using my talents to synthesize thoughts. But what I do with my predicting in, in business, which is really where I do it, everything had already happened. NFT, I, I looked at CryptoKitties in 2017. Hmm. Nothing I ever talk about is Nostradamus, is predicting. All of it is fastest observation to truth and willing to bet the farm, thus being loud on it. Mm. Once I have my conviction, I'm there. As a matter of fact, this is a very weird thing that I, I, I hope we can clip this. There was a boxer named Julian Jackson in the 80s. I loved him. He was a fucking terror. He had like a Patrick Ewing flat top. And this motherfucker, if he punched people, knocked them out so heavy, it was crazy. Mm. Like more than Tyson. I'm telling you, please go to YouTube, Google Julian Jackson. Look at this fucker. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. Look at that 46 and 1 with 43 knockouts. Scroll down wow. just a little bit. Look at that. 46 and 1, 43 knockouts. This guy in a post game wow. once, in a post game, Never you gotta watch him. They're crazy. They're, they're not normal knockouts. Mm for boxing. After one fight, he said something. I'll never forget, I must have been like 12 or 13. He goes, and I think he's Jamaican if I'm remembering right. So he has a nice solid little accent and he goes, the announcer's like, how'd you da -da -da? And he goes, you don't understand. He goes, when my hand connects with a man's jaw and I get this feeling in my elbow, no man can ever get up. <laughs> yeah, it was some <laughs> gangster shit. I, 40, 30 years later, I'm affected by that. If I, do my so, if I do my human anthropology work and I have my eureka moment, Musical.ly is gonna be big, it's next, aka TikTok. Uber is gonna work. Look what just happened in New York. I can't believe it's working here. NFTs, gonna, you. If I do my work and I feel that click, I will never be wrong because I haven't for 35 years. I sold all my baseball cards because I was at a baseball card show in 1993. Normal my life, doing 15, 20 of them a year. I'm sitting there, the doors open at this high bridge fire station. Three people walk in, I listen to one conversation and I turn to my best friend Brandon and say I'm selling all my baseball cards and sold the whole collection and six months later the whole market collapsed. What was the combo? It was just two guys, the way they were talking, the passion was gone. Yeah. It was over. Hmm. And, and then I put all my money into toys, which ended up being right. I bought all these Star Wars from the 70s and all these Transformers, and I ended up being so right. eBay came out two years later, the whole thing popped off. Comic-Con culture took over. I was so right. It's what I'm good at. Kobe's good at what he was great at. Beyonce's good at what she's good at. I'm going to be one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time, not because I'm saying it because fucking my parents had sex without a condom in Belarus <laughs> in 19 fucking 75 at the exact right second and then a lot of other shit happened along the way and just here I am and guess what? Who gives a fuck? I'm gonna die, have 24 hours of trending on whatever the fuck Twitter is of the day and then everybody's gonna go on with their normal fucking life. Mm. So I don't think I'm great because of it. Who gives a shit? But it is what it is and so I feel no pressure because I'm great at what I do. Mm. 
I felt more pressure coming up because it was how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I needed all those. Yeah. I didn't have a Harvard degree. You had I was a hits. street kid. Yeah. I was a liquor. I had. I needed all those to get to this moment. Now yeah. it's easy, but I value my legacy so much that I will never compromise it for any bag. If fuck, fucking some Saudi plus Russian plus China transformer comes to me, the three fucking <laughs> wealthiest <laughs> people from that company, and they fucking in front of me turn into a fucking Power Ranger, and they're like, Dar -ra, we'll give you 73 trillion in cash if you just tell everybody that you know oxygen should be bought like water was. We saw the Schultz thing, and you should do that. <laughs> I'd be like, fuck you, transformer, and leave, because if I don't believe it, the fuck? I, I had enough money when I made 100,000 a year. This isn't about the money anymore. This is about getting into the fucking entrepreneurial hall of fame. That means your word, your legacy, your actions, your execution. That's what I'm on. Mm. Amen. Mm. Fire. Mm. Mm. Gary V, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Thank Tell you. them where they can find you, even though.